हॅलो एव्हरीवन आय एम सुरेंद्रनाथ शिवाजी जाधव सिव्हिल इंजिनिअरिंग डिपार्टमेंट के आय आय टीज कॉलेज ऑफ इंजिनिअरिंग कोल्हापूर अँड वेलकम यू टू कोर्स स्ट्रक्चरल अनालिसिस वी आर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द युनिट नंबर वन दॅट इज द कंबाईन डायरेक्ट अँड बेंडिंग स्ट्रेस सो दिस इज अवर सेकंड लेसन सो जस्ट रिकॉल द फर्स्ट लेसन सो इन द लेसन वन वी डिस्कस अबाउट द इंट्रोडक्टरी पार्ट अबाउट द डायरेक्ट अँड बेंडिंग स्ट्रेस ऑन द कॉलम अँड इन द लेसन वन रेक्टँगुलर कॉलम इज सब्जेक्टेड टू द कॉम्प्रेसिव्ह लोड विच इज इसेंट्रिक टू ओनली वन सिंगल ॲक्सिस अँड फ्रॉम धिस डेरिवेशन वी आर फाइंडिंग द वेरियस फॉर्म्युलाज जस्ट लाईक द डायरेक्ट स्ट्रेस दॅट इज द सिग्मा नॉट इज इक्वल टू लोड अपॉन एरिया पी बाय ए बेंडिंग स्ट्रेस सिग्मा बी इज इक्वल टू प्लस मायनस एम अपॉन आय मल्टीप्लाय बाय वाय और प्लस मायनस एम अपॉन झेड अँड रिझल्टन स्ट्रेस इज नथिंग बट द कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ डायरेक्ट अँड बेंडिंग स्ट्रेस वी आर गेटिंग द मॅक्झिमम स्ट्रेस दॅट इज सिग्मा मॅक्स इज इक्वल टू पी बाय ए इन ब्रॅकेट वन प्लस सिक्स ई डिवायडेड बाय बी अँड मिनिमम स्ट्रेस इज सिग्मा मिनिमम इज इक्वल टू पी बाय ए इन ब्रॅकेट वन मायनस सिक्स ई डिवायडेड बाय बी it these are the formulas for the rectangular column uh, eccentric loading to the one axis only so now we are uh, going to learn about the uh, rectangular column subjected to load which is eccentric to the both the axis so let us uh, consider one rectangular column a b c d in the cross section subjected to the compressive load which is eccentric with the both the axis here you can see in the figure p is load uh, eccentric load acting on the column and that load is eccentric with the both the axis here you can see if uh, we are uh, distribute the column base in four quadrants that here the p load will be existed in the first quadrant near to c so here p is the eccentric load on the column ex now you can see the the point load on the base there are two eccentricity involved okay so first eccentricity is ex that is the eccentricity of the load about xx axis and second eccentricity is ey that is the eccentricity of the load about yy axis okay so next so basic uh, basic dimensions b is equal to width of column and d is equal to depth of column so from that you can calculate the sigma not that is the direct stress and uh, here two eccentricities are involved so bending will be existed in the both the axis so sigma bx means the bending stress due to eccentricity ex similarly sigma by is the bending stress due to eccentricity ey sigma by is equal to bending stress due to eccentricity ey due to this eccentricity movement of load about xx that is the nothing but the mx so mx is the moment of load about xs is it uh, it can be calculated by load multiplied by eccentricity in x direction similarly in the y direction my is the moment of the load about yy axis that can be also calculated by p multiplied by ey so these are the terms we, we are required during the uh, bending stress calculation so also we required the moment of inertia in both the axis so first axis is xx axis so moment of inertia of rectangular column section about xx axis is bd cube by 12 similarly in yy axis moment of inertia about yy axis is db cube by 12 so you can calculate the direct stress is nothing but the p by a and bending stress due to eccentricity ex is nothing but the sigma bx is equal to mx divided by i xx multiply by y if we are putting the mx value in this equation you we will get the sigma bx is equal to p multiply by ex divided by i xx multiply by y 
so here you here you can see why it can be varied from minus d by 2 to d by 2 then bending stress due to eccentricity e y sigma b y can be calculated by m y upon i y y multiplied by x is is it nothing but the p multiplied by e y divided by i y y multiplied by x and here x can be varied from b by 2 to minus b by 2 to plus b by 2 x varies from minus b by 2 to b plus b by 2 so after getting the direct stress and bending stress we can calculate the resultant stress at any point is it is nothing but the sigma naught plus or minus b x plus or minus sigma b y resultant stress at any point is equal to sigma naught plus sigma b x plus sigma b y resultant stress at any point is equal to sigma naught plus or minus sigma b x plus or minus sigma b y according to the location of the corner so after putting the well, uh, formulas of direct and bending stress we can uh, formulate the resultant stress at any point is equal to p by a plus or minus m x upon i x x multiply by y plus or minus m y upon i y y multiply by x so here you can see the load is in the first quadrant means uh, if uh, if we uh, if we uh, distribute the if we see the load is in the first quadrant so associate with the first quadrant that is the c point where the x uh, ordinate is positive also y ordinate is positive so resultant stress is maximum at the c point similarly at the a point you can see it is the opposite to the c point where both the values that is the x values and y values ordinates are the negative so resultant stress is negative or minimum at the a point at b and d points where at b point x ordinate is positive and y ordinate is negative so we can calculate the resultant stress by p by a minus m x upon i x x multiply by y plus m y upon i y y multiply by x where y ordinate is negative so our second sigma b x is negative here for the point d x ordinate is negative and y ordinate is positive so from that resultant stress can be getting at the point d is equal to p upon a plus m x upon i x x multiply by y minus m y upon i y y multiply by x here our uh, x ordinate is negative so sigma b y is negative here so let us uh, solve first example uh, let us solve first example on the same basic fundamentals so here the first example is a column is rectangular cross section of 300 by 400 in dimensions the column carries an eccentric load of 360 kN on one diagonal at a distance of quarter diagonal length from the corner calculate the stress at all four corners draw stress distribution diagram for any two adjacent sides so let us draw tri diagram for the rectangular column so this is the diagram where uh, width is 300 and uh, depth is 400 so we are uh, naming the corners a b c d and we are selecting a c as a diagonal so in the given problem they have given the eccentric load of 360 kN on the diagonal so at a distance of quarter diagonal length from the corner so we are consider corner c so from c we are pointing the load point at a distance of one fourth of diagonal okay so then we are finding out the cg so it is on the diagonal so 
here you can see the location of the point load is at the center of first quadrant so first uh, first quadrant so here you can see so ex is nothing but the location of the point load from the x axis and ey is the location of the point load from the y axis so here after the calculating we can find out the eccentricity ex is nothing but the 100 mm and ey is nothing but the 75 mm so here given data is 360 kN ex here you, we are calculating that is 100 mm ey is 75 mm okay so next is the we are calculating the movement for the bending stress calculation so movement due to ex is nothing but the p multiplied by ex here p is 360 into 10 raised to 3 in newton multiplied by eccentricity in x that is 100 mm from that we are getting the mx value here in newton mm next my my is nothing but p multiplied by ey so p is in 360 into 10 raised to 3 newton and my value is sorry ey value is uh, my is nothing but the p multiplied by ey is equal to 360 multiplied by 10 raised to 3 multiplied by 75 is the ey from that we are getting the value of my in newton mm then we required the moment of inertia so ixx nothing but the bd cube by 12 after putting the b and d value we are getting the ixx as 16 into 10 raised to 8 mm raised to 4 Similarly, in y, y, y axis, we can calculate the moment of inertia in y, y, i, y, y is equal to d, b cube by 12. So, after putting the all d and b value, we can get the i, y, y as 9 into 10 raise to 8 mm raise to 4. So, these are the basic uh, values we are required during the calculation of direct and bending stress. So, here the load here you can see it is in the first quadrant okay the well values of x and y are taken to be positive on the same side of xx and y y as the load so here you can see we i am marking the positive x axis and positive y axis as per the location of load so positive x axis and positive y axis you can see here and opposite axis are the negative x and negative y so at a you can uh, calculate or you can uh, note down the ordinates that is the x ordinate at a x ordinate is minus 150 and y ordinate is minus 200 similarly at the b point x ordinate is positive x that is the positive 150 mm and y is negative that is the negative 200 mm at C point where the uh, first quadrant where the load is exist so both the x and y values are positive that is why x is equal to positive 150 and y is positive 200 at D you can find out the x is equal to minus 150 and y is plus 200 so from that you can see the C at C point x ordinate and y ordinate are positive and opposite to the c that is the a point at the a point x and y are the negative so we are getting the maximum stress at c and minimum stress at a so first calculate the direct stress sigma naught is equal to load upon cross section area so load is 360 into 10 to 3 in newton and area is 300 by 400 mm square so direct stress can be getting from this uh, values is 3 newton per mm square so next is bending stress so bending stress due to the eccentricity ex is sigma bx is equal to mx upon ixx multiplied by y so mx value is 36 into 10 raised to 6 and ixx is 16 into 10 raised to 8 here y value can be positive or negative okay if we are uh, we are considering the age cd then 
these are the positive 200 and if we are consider the age a b then these are the negative 200s so i am right uh, right now i am taking positive and negative 200 values so i am getting the positive and negative 4.5 newton per mm square is the bending stress due to eccentricity ex on the both the uh, edges similarly in the bending stress due to eccentricity ey sigma by is equal to r my upon i y y multiply by x so my is 27 into 10 raised to 6 divided by 9 into 10 raised to 8 is the i y y multiply by x distance from the y y axis so you can see so bc edge is on the right hand side on the same side of the load so we are considering positive 150 and the opposite edge that is the ad edge is the at a distance of negative 150 so we right now i am considering positive and negative 150 values so we are getting the bending stress due to eccentricity ey is positive negative 4.5 newton per mm square so so next step is calculate the resultant stress so resultant stress we are calculating for only for the maximum stress and minimum stress so maximum stress can be getting at the location c where the x ordinate and y ordinates are positive so resultant stress at c is equal to direct stress plus bx uh, direct stress plus sigma bx plus sigma by so 3 plus 4.5 plus 4.5 that is the total 12 newton per mm square the sign is positive so it is compressive stress so next minimum stress can be find out opposite opposite to a okay so let us calculate the uh, resultant stress at b so where you can see at b x ordinate is positive and y ordinate is negative so y ordinate is associated with the sigma bx so sigma bx we are considered as a negative value so direct stress is 3 sigma bx is minus 4.5 and sigma by is positive 4.5 from that we can get the resultant stress at 3 newton per mm square that is in the compressive next point is at a okay so where the x ordinate and y ordinates are negative so sigma bx is negative also sigma by is also negative so resultant stress at a is equal to direct stress minus 4.5 minus 4.5 that is the minus 6 newton per mm square it is negative in sign so the nature of the resultant stress is tensile so last point is at point d where the direct stress is 3 these, these are the constant for each and every location but at d x ordinate is negative and y ordinate is positive so due to x ordinate if x ordinate is negative we can get the value sigma y b y is negative 4.5 so resultant stress is direct stress plus sigma b x minus sigma b y that is 3 plus 4.5 minus 4.5 is equal to 3 newton per mm square so positive indicates compressive stress so from this calculation we can get the maximum stress at c that is the 12 newton per mm square compressive in nature and negative and minimum stress at a that is the minus 6 newton per mm square that is tensile in nature so this is the first numerical so after we have to draw the variation of stress so i am considering ab phase and ad phase so at a point at a point stress is negative that is in the tension and at b point tension uh, resultant stress is resultant uh, at a point resultant stress is negative 6 and b point the resultant stress is positive 3 so this is the uh, stress variation diagram at uh, H A B. Similarly, at A D H, the at D 
reason let us solve second example let us solve second example that is a short column of rectangular section 80 mm by 60 mm carries a load of 40 kN at a 20 mm from the longer side and 35 mm from the shorter side. Determine the maximum compressive and tensile stress in the section. So, let us draw the cross section of the rectangular column. Width is 80 mm and depth or thickness is 60 mm. So, here you can see the load, eccentric load magnitude is 40 kN and uh, the location of eccentric load is at 20 mm from longer side. So, 20 mm from longer side and 35 mm from the shorter side. So, shorter side is BC we are considering and longer side we are considering as a CD. Okay. So, here you can see the location of the load. So, uh, now we can uh, plot CG centroidal axis that is x axis and y y axis because these are required to uh, calculate the eccentricity of the load. So, from there you can see the location from the x axis and y y axis is 5 and 10. So, 10 mm from x axis and 5 mm from the y axis. So, E x is 10 mm and E y is 5 mm. So, Next is movement, we can calculate the movement due to eccentricity. So, m x in the due to the eccentricity E x that is P multiplied by E x that is 40 into 10 raise to 3 multiplied by 10 in Newton per mm. Next m y is the movement due to eccentricity E y. So, P multiplied by E y that is 40 into 10 raise to 3 multiplied by 5 that is in Newton mm. Next is the movement of inertia we required in x x axis direction i x x is equal to b d cube by 12. After putting the b and d value we can get the i x x value here. Similarly for i y y value, so i y y can be calculated by d b cube by 12. After putting all the d and b values we can get the i y value for the rectangular column. Next is we have to find out the direct stress here. So, direct stress can be calculated by P by A. Load is 40 kN. So, 14 to 10 raise to 3 Newton divided by area is 60 by 80. From that, we can calculate the direct stress at direct stress is 8.33 Newton per mm square. Similarly, bending stress sigma b x that is the bending stress due to eccentricity e x is equal to m x upon i x x multiplied by y. So, m x value we can put here and i x x value we can put here and y value is the distance from the x x axis. So, on top edge that is the c d edge y value is positive 30 and on bottom edge that is the edge a b the uh, y value is negative 30 because the point load or compressive load is acting on the top of the x x axis. So, from that we can calculate the bending stress as positive and negative 8.33 Newton per mm square. Similarly, bending stress due to the eccentricity E y sigma B y is equal to m y upon I y y multiply by x. So, we can put the m y value I y value and x value is the distance from the y y axis on edge b c and on edge a d. So, eccentric load is on the right hand side of the y y axis. So, b c on the b c edge x, x x value is positive 40 on the other hand uh, other edge opposite edge of uh, at edge a d the x value is negative 40. So, from that we can calculate the bending stress as positive negative 3.125 Newton per mm square. So, then we can calculate the resultant stress from this formula sigma naught plus minus sigma b x plus minus sigma b y. 
that plus minus according to the location of the point load or ordinate of the x and y ordinates of each and every corner. So right now we have to find out only maximum stress and minimum stress. So point load existed on the top of x axis and right hand side of y y axis that is these are the first quadrant we are we can consider. So corner of the first quadrant is C point. So maximum stress can be find out at C point. So it is nothing but the direct stress plus sigma Bx plus sigma By that is 8.33 plus 8.33 plus 3.125. From that we can calculate the maximum stress at 19.785 newton per mm square similarly we can find out the opposite edge of c where x ordinate and y ordinate are negative so minimum stress can be find out at point location a so where sigma not minus sigma bx minus sigma by is the resultant stress because x and y ordinates are negative so 8.33 minus 8.33 minus 3.125 from that we can calculate the minimum stress as minus 3.125 newton per m square so maximum stress is in compression compressive in nature and minimum stress at a is in tensile in nature so so in the lesson 2 we can calculate we we are studied uh, in lesson 2 we studied about the how to calculate the resultant stress if the eccentric load is about both the axis thank you